In this video, we're going to talk about pointers to structures. So we've seen before how you can create, can create a C structure. And here we have struct my struct, where we have a character array that we use as a string. And we also have a number. And I've set a default string length here. And that's what I use to define the size of that array. And I have declared and initialized a variable called struct1 that has the string Alice and the number 10 or the integer 10 as its parameters. Now I can create a pointer to a structure as well. And then just like with any other type to have a pointer to a structure, we give it the type name and then asterisk the name of the variable and I'll assign it to null initially. So now we're going to use malloc So malloc takes the size of, or it takes the number of bytes that you want to allocate. And we could calculate how big struct my struct t is, but a better way is just to use size of so that we get the exact right size. And if something changes in my struct, we don't have to modify that number. And we have to remember that my struct t is is a struct. Now we do want to check to make sure that we allocated our memory correctly. So we're going to check to see if pointer is equal to null. We're going to put an error. Actually, there's no underline there. I think I have another one here that I should remove. So we're going to say that there was an error allocating that pointer. We're going to write that to standard error. And we're also going to go ahead and exit. If we can't allocate memory for the pointer, then our pointer example is not going to make a lot of sense anyway. So we'll just exit. Okay, so now I want to initialize the values. In the structure that point that pointer is pointing to. So first off, I'm going to use arrow notation since it's a pointer. Pointer num is equal to 10. And then I'm going to need to string copy into pointer Okay, so now we have some values there, and now we're going to print the two structures. So let's do, since we're going to be printing a lot of structures, let's write a function to do that so that we don't have to keep uh, typing the same thing over and over. So we're going to print a struct and we're going to pass a constant struct my struct t pointer. And we'll just call it s. And to be clear, that's going to take a my struct t as pointer as its parameter. This isn't going to just print anything. So we're going to print f name and num. We need 
a forward declaration. And just as a side note, I'm putting a comment here saying that this is the forward declarations. Typically in your code, you're not going to have that. Any C programmer is going to know that that's a forward declaration. But since we're just learning C, I wanted to have that reminder in there. So how do we print the structures? I'm missing a void there. So to print the struct my struct variable, I'm going to call print struct, and I'm going to pass it the address of struct one. And for the second structure, I'm just going to pass pointer. I don't need to pass the address because pointer, the variable, holds an address. So when I pass the pointer, I'm passing. So when I pass that variable, I'm passing a pointer to it to the structure that was allocated. So let's compile that and run it. So we have some errors here. So let's check that. I don't think that's our problem. Let me see. Okay, so I had a weird semicolon there. So let's see if that helps. Yeah, I made a silly mistake here. So here I have a struct declaration but I haven't defined the struct yet. So I bet that when I compile that, now it's gonna work fine. So again, what was happening, when you use a name of a type in C, like a struct name, then that, if it doesn't know what that is, just like with a function, it makes some assumptions about what that type looks like. And then when I declared it later, all of a sudden, now this type and whatever it, assumed it was before could potentially be incompatible. Now, in my case, they weren't because I was using it the same way. Uh, but you want to make sure that anytime you need want to declare a type or so forth, you do that before you actually use that name. So that will, that's what was going on there. So now let's go ahead and run our code. And we can see it prints both values. OK, so going back to our functions, if if for, for whatever reason we tried to do something like s num is equal to, th or let's say, we'll increment it, since it's a const pointer parameter, we're going to get a compile error. And there are certainly ways around that if you do certain things but again anytime you want something to be constant if you label it as constant the compiler will help you not change that on accident so let's write another function that actually is going to update the structure now here we're going to actually update the structure fields. And we're going to pass a pointer. It's not going to be constant because we're going to change whatever it's pointing to. And we're going to want a string for the name. And we're going to pass that number. In this function, we're going to string copy, and we'll use string the length of the string symbolic constant that we defined earlier, just to make sure that if you pass something in too big, we won't 
overflow the existing string that's in the structure. And then we're going to change the number and say that that's equal to num. So let's use this function. So we're going to pass the address of struct1 again. And we'll update the other structure as well, the one that we dynamically allocated. Again, we don't have to use the reference operator here because pointer is a, already holds a, a point, an address of what we want to change. And then let's print the two structures again. And we didn't create a for declaration here. So when I run this, you can see that both of those structures were updated. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how to work with pointers and structures. This is something we'll do a lot. So it's good to understand this. In the next module, we'll actually do some linked list implementations that use dynamically allocated memory for the individual nodes. And so we'll do something fairly similar there that we did here.